Hello, second graders. Ms. Max here with you for another art lesson this week. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, so in this week's art lesson, we're thinking a lot about texture and we're thinking about how to use texture to tell a story. So Eric Carl is one of the artists who we're looking at for this project. And Eric Carl worked really hard his whole life to and created many, many, he's still alive today, but he's created many, many children's books using texture to tell the story. And that's what our lesson is, is using texture to tell a story. Um, so I've frozen the screen on the read aloud that's part of the slideshow on an image of a goat. So we can see texture in the surface of the animals, uh, the shapes that make up the animal's body. So texture is the look or the feeling of a surface. So the way a surface actually feels, that's actual texture. And the way that a surface looks like it would feel, that is visual texture, texture you can just see. So here we're seeing visual texture um, and we see the hatch lines here that's showing some scruffiness in the fur. Um, we've talked about a lot of different texture words in this project too, scratchy, uh, smooth, rough, fluffy, all really great texture words. So you are going to now just enjoy the process of making some texture on your own. So this project has three steps to it. And those three steps are a lot more fun if you don't jump ahead to the next one, but really just enjoy each one as it is. So the things that you'll need, you need some paper, white paper and some sort of color construction paper. So I'm using nine by 12 of both of those sizes. You will need some crayons, preferably without paper on them. So if you have some old crayons that have um, the paper removed, uh, that works really well. You'll need, I like to use a placemat because things can get, let me just tilt down now that we're not looking so much at the screen. Um, <clears throat> I like to use a placemat in case I go off the paper a bit. So you can see I have a placemat here, which is just a file folder um, trimmed and opened up. And then some things that you could make texture out of. Now there's a lot of different things out there that you can make texture with. You can use, for example, bubble wrap. I'm choosing to use, I wonder if I can, sorry, <laughs> I'm making anyone car sick by moving this around a little bit but I just wanted to adjust here. Um, so if we take a look at the things that we have maybe in our recycling bin or somewhere in our house, I'm going to use tin foil because this is something that most people have in their house. And if you crumple up the tin foil and then just kind of pull it back open again, you don't want to smooth it too much, but pull it back open again. This is actual texture, right? It feels <clears throat> bumpy. It feels a little rough. It feels a little pointy. And I'm going to change this now from being actual texture into being visual texture. So the way I'm going to do this is just cover it up with the paper, flatten it enough where I can rub on top of it. I'm going to choose some colors to start with and just start rubbing across my paper. You need to press pretty hard but you can see how it shows up. Right, so I'm now getting this effect of visual texture on my paper and I'm gonna change colors. You can really just fill your whole paper. See what happens. You can switch textures, you can definitely switch colors. This also works really well with leaves. If you'd like to go outside and collect some leaves, that would be a really fun way to do this. Okay, and you just wanna fill your whole paper. You can even go over some areas again, have a little bit more texture and mix your colors up a little. And just enjoy the process of making texture. Okay, you can pause here if you'd like a little more time to fill your paper with texture. This is a good time to pause. Okay, and we're back. So now the next step is to take some scissors and to show scissor safety, we wanna sit down when we're cutting with scissors. I wanna keep our feet on the ground so we're nice and steady. And then I'm going to just start having some fun cutting some shapes. 
So when I want to cut some interesting, organic, free-flowing, free-form type of shapes, I'm turning my paper, you might notice, I'm turning my paper and not my scissors. My scissors are always pointing straight forward, but it's my paper that is moving. So I've cut this shape out. Maybe I'm gonna go in and just do a little more snipping here. And now you can definitely pause the video and just kind of make some free form shapes. Have fun cutting. Be creative with your cutting. You can use your scissors almost like you're drawing and creating new shapes. Okay, so take as long as you'd like. Remember, turn your paper, not your scissors. My scissors are always pointing forward away from my body. Okay, pause here if you would like. Okay, and we're, when you're finished cutting up your shapes, you're going to take your construction paper now, and you're going to take your shapes and try out different ways of arranging your shapes on your paper so that it starts to maybe look like there's a story. Maybe there's some characters. Maybe there's a setting where they're at. Maybe something's happening between the two of them. This kind of reminds me of two little cute birds, little like I don't know, chubby cute birds on the ground. Um, you can think about what would go around them, what might add to the story. You can even go back and cut something out like a beak or eyes. If you wanna go back and add something that it's almost there, it's almost reminding you of it, but it's not quite, and you wanna add just a little bit more. Okay, and this is the part I forgot to mention, you'll need your glue stick as well. So put your pieces together. I'm gonna add, use my Sharpie to add a little bit of an eye inside of the eye that I cut out. And maybe I'm just gonna add a little dot here for this one's eye. I'm doing this upside down, so <laughs> excuse me if it's not quite, there we go. And arrange them the way you'd like to see them on your paper so that there's some sort of story being told. Add papers as much as you'd like. Maybe this one is swimming or sitting on a little tuft of grass or a nest. And this one's coming to check in. So there's just so many ways you can keep adding your shapes and telling stories. All right, so everyone have fun telling your texture stories. Don't forget to glue it down once you decide on an arrangement. And let me know how it turns out. So please just attach, turn in your... Um, lesson if you are in cohort D you can just click turn in and turn in your lesson right here in Google Classrooms. All right have a great day everybody. Bye.